How's it going? Welcome back to Dylan Pickup's blog. So today we're going to talk about wax potting. Um, some people say, oh, I want all my pickups wax potted. Some people say I don't. Um, what do you use? How do you do it? All that sort of stuff. So let, let's talk about that. Um, wax potting, first of all, didn't always happen. In, in the old days, pretty much almost nothing was wax potted. Some older fender pickups were wax potted. Um, a lot of humbuckers were not wax potted. Well, why, you do, why do you do that? Well, we spoke about this briefly before in another video, but anytime we have, if we go back to our video actually on how pickups work, anytime we have movement inside the pickup besides the string moving, um, and more specifically, anytime we have movement inside the magnetic field around the pickup besides the string, we're going to get noise. And that noise usually happens at such a high frequency uh, that it causes feedback. It causes a squeal. It's not true room feedback because it's actually coming from within the pickup itself. You know, when we talk about feedback that we like, we talk about, uh, you know, standing in front of your amp with it cranked all the way up and using that, you know, using that as a tool, part of your tone. Um, squealy feedback from not potting and from motion inside the pickup is a lot of times very uncontrollable. So what happens a lot of times, so let's take a couple of examples. Let's take a Telecaster pickup with, uh, and I'm only going to draw a couple of the, the poles here, but so let's say we have one magnetic pole, two magnetic poles, and then here's the bottom uh, of it and it has a metal plate on the bottom. What can happen is between that metal plate can be a gap right there because nothing is 100% machined perfect. And what can happen is that can vibrate um, when you touch the guitar, when you tap on the guitar, when you pluck a string on the guitar or hold a note in a certain way. Uh, that thing can vibrate, but it can be uh, not vibrate basically the same way the note does for some reason, um, or it can just vibrate because the guitar is always moving. Um, and it will cause, as soon as you start to bring up your, your volume knob, it'll, that high pitched squeal that just absolutely drives you crazy. The other thing it can do is that it can actually vibrate with the noise of the guitar, um, you know, like when you strum a chord, but so much so that it overpowers what you're playing and you can't control it you know you just it's it's uncontrollable because that vibration between that metal plate and the bottom of the pickup um, and it's not because it's banging against anything what it's doing is it's moving within the magnetic field causing a sound other than what the string is, is doing and they you know since it's not a string it can't move exactly the same causes that that crazy squeal so the other thing uh, that can cause it is so now let's take a humbucker and I'm just gonna for sake of time we're just gonna draw so we have a bobbin here and a bobbin here and we have the cover that goes over it and here's like the screws coming out of it right the same thing can happen here is you can have a gap between well there always is a gap between the bobbins somewhat and the top of it and humbuckers are real bad about it if they're not they're not potted because this almost acts like a drum, almost like, <laughs> it really does. It almost acts like the top head of a drum because it'll vibrate um, and cause tons and tons of squealing. So how do we fix it? Well, we dip the pickup in wax. Um, and it's not just the covers to the bobbins or, you know, in fact, in a humbucker, there's more parts you gotta worry about. You know, there's the magnet down here, there is um, that little retainer bar, actually it would be on this side, and then there's the piece of wood that goes in here. All that stuff in the base plate along the bottom, all that stuff can move around. And the more it moves around, the more it has an opportunity to cause noise and to cause feedback. So that is what is called being a microphonic, when a pickup is microphonic. That just means that there's stuff inside the pickup that are not supposed to be moving that are moving. Really what we want is all this stuff to be as still as possible and allow the string to be the only thing that influences the magnetic field. But if all this stuff is rattling around, then you have noise, you have clunks, and you have feedback. 
okay? On top of this, not just the actual parts of the pickup, but within the pickup itself, and within the coil itself, apparently we're doing random colors today. So let's look at the bobbin itself. So here we have the bobbin, and we have the coil on the bobbin. Remember that these are wires that are laid, you know, like this. Those wires can bang against each other and they can actually, they can move, okay? So when you wind the pickup, you give a lot of attention to the tension of the coil itself and that it's the tightness or the looseness of however you want it. Now, some people say, well, it all should be really tight and really uniform. Some people say, I like it to scatter. You know, there's a lot of winding, mm, ideas about what what should happen inside a pickup and honestly that's what gives each pickup winder a lot of their a lot of their characteristics and their actually you know their individuality so that's you know that's up to every each each winder however what's happening in all pickups is that these are these things are constantly vibrating okay so if the wire is vibrating the string is vibrating the wire is vibrating Again, it's a moving part in the pickup that's not supposed to be moving to a point. So if we wax pot a pickup and we take all the motion out of the windings in the pickup and it's 100% rock solid, you can actually lose some dynamics to that pickup, some musicality, some vocal quality to that pickup can be lost. Because to some extent, and we all know this, the amount of feedback, how we can get the pickup, the guitar to sing, um, you know, a lot of that has to do with the bridge and a lot of it honestly has to do with how you fret the note and your, how much drive you're using. There's the, the whole, I always say the tone of the guitar is the sum of all of its parts, right? But what we don't wanna do is build the entire guitar, play a certain way, have our rig set up a certain way, only to be dampened by the first step, right? So we don't want a rock solid pickup that is so solid inside that it can't have that little bit of motion that we can use as part of our tone. So how we wax pot the pickup when the wax goes inside there, because we dip this in, pick, in a wax, right? And honestly, if you look at any video from even the biggest boutique manufacturers, they're using fryers they're using crock pots, they're using, I mean, there's, Stumac has a special thing, but uh, I use, I have modified a, a, a crock pot so that I can, you know, keep an eye on the temperature because you don't want to melt anything. But obviously, you know, so, but anyway, so I have, I have a specially modified crock pot that I use and I can do about, I don't know, 20 pickups at a time or something. Um, I usually don't do that many because I like to control it better. Because the reason we like to control it is because now if we look at the coil, and here is the core, whether this be screw poles or a blade or whatever, so this is what we're looking at. Let's say we're looking at the coil without the bobbin on it. If we put it into the wax and we let it sit in there a really, really long time, then that allows the wax to penetrate all the way to the center of the coil, and the wax is between each of these, okay? Um, epoxy, like we see in a lot of uh, really high gain pickups and active pickups. You know, you've ever seen an active pickup, you pull it up, you look underneath it and it looks like it's almost caulked around the outside. It's because they use epoxy. The problem with epoxy is, is it's super thick and it doesn't actually get very far into the coil. You know, it might only get like this far in. Um, lacquer uh, is, can be used, but it's very hard when it's done and it's a little bit brittle. Um, so how far we allow the wax to go into the coil can influence how musical that coil still is without being so microphonic that you can't play it, uh, especially at high volumes or with a lot of gain, you know, that sort of thing. So when we build pickups for people, I'll ask them, you know, what are you using it for? Are you playing at home? Are you playing in front of, you know, is it, is it you and Lemmy, you know? or Ingve playing with however many marshals, how much gain are you using, what, you know, what are we doing, so that we understand, because I can tailor this when we make the pickup to, you know, 
this is one of the, the variables that I like to know about ahead of time so that, uh, so that we can make this thing as vocal as possible without making it unplayable. Because we want it to be vocal. Um, you know, we want it to be able to sing. We want it to be able to hold those notes forever. We want it to go into that sweet spot of feedback. Um, you know, that's part of playing. That's part of the fun. We don't want to take that away, but we want to make it to where it's also playable for the application. And there's another couple uh, things that you can that that can happen in a guitar that make a lot of feedback. Um, and this is and so let's get into not just wax potting of the pickup, which we can do if you have a you know if you have an old pickup that's become microphonic, we can wax pot it, uh, provided it's you know not going to damage it because you don't want to wreck them because you can depending on how they break down. The reasons we always want to wax pot a little bit are um, since everything is always moving. I think we talked about this the other day in our vintage video. Since everything is always moving. Uh, for lack of a better term, those wires are banging against each other and over time that'll actually break a pickup down to where it will actually not work anymore because that insulation is fairly fragile. It can be fairly fragile depending on what it is, especially plain enamel is, is pretty, uh, it can get brittle as it gets older. They vibrate against each other and the next thing you know you have windings shorting against each other. Um, we always pot the bobbins before we make single coils like strats and tele pickups because we want an insulation away from the magnet itself and the insulated wire so that they don't rub against each other. So you don't want a ton of vibration inside that pickup, not only for the feedback part of it, but also for the, honestly, for the wear part of it. A pickup could actually wear out if it's just, you know, rubbing against each other all the time inside. Um, so, you know, that's another factor to it. Now, obviously how we wind it and the construction of it, that, that all matters. Um, a couple other things that we can do to control feedback. And here's a couple of things that you can think about in your guitar. Uh, probably the, one of the biggest, besides humbuckers with covers on them, uh, one of the biggest guitars that has a lot of feedback associated with it is a Telecaster. All right, so we move things around a little bit so we can talk about the Telecaster. So. One of the reasons why uh, feedback happens a little bit more in a Telecaster and why it's one of those things that you kind of have to watch a little bit more is because this bridge, the area of the bridge is obviously super huge and you have this huge metal plate sitting against the body with a lot of vibration uh, potential. Okay. The other thing is, is on the bottom of the Telecaster pickup, there is that steel plate, copper plated, plain steel, whatever, but it's, it's a steel plate. The steel plate is integral to the tone of a tele pickup because if you go back to our other videos you'll you'll find out about that how it it reshapes the magnetic field but what that means is that mag that since that bottom plate is a part of the magnetic field and one of the reasons why it's it's why it's the shape it is is it also means that if it moves it affects the tone and it also is a major source of, or can be a major source of feedback bef uh, because it can vibrate against the bottom. It can vi it, it's like a big metal drum almost, okay? So you can wax pot the pickup and then you can put the metal plate on the bottom or you can put the metal plate on the bottom and then wax pot the pickup and then that makes it to where uh, there's wax, a thin layer of wax between the pickup and the metal plate and it dampens that metal plate from vibrating. That'll cut down a lot on, the, on there on the amount of feedback. If you're getting a bunch of feedback from your Telecaster, but you like your pickup, you don't want to replace it, you could either have us wax pot it, or you could actually take it off, and you could pop the bottom off, and drip a couple of things of, like a drip a little bit of candle wax in there, and then press it back down, and then reassemble it, okay? While it's still a little bit warm, so that it squishes down and, you know, takes up that gap. If you're still having problems with feedback on your Tele, you could take your bridge off and you could do the same thing. Drip a little bit of hot wax on the bottom of the bridge. So while it's still hot, slap it back down and bolt it down so that it squishes the hot wax out, you know, between the wood and, you know, make sure it's not a lot because otherwise it'll drip all over your finish. In fact, you might want to lay some stuff around there so that it doesn't mess up your finish. But that is a thing you can do is put a little bit of hot wax between your bridge and your in your guitar and it, it might cut down on a lot of that especially if you're playing with a lot of gain or you're playing you know 
in a real loud environment or you like a, that's the other thing too, you really like a really microphonic pickup, you like a lot of feedback, you like a loose pickup, you like that sound, but you're getting so much of it, you can cut down on it from uh, the base plate by being waxed just under the base plate uh, and under the bridge. So there's a couple of suggestions just to keep down on feedback, depending on, you know, how much of it you want. Same thing with a humbucker with a cover on it, um, if you are adding, this is another thing. If a lot of people will be like, well, I, I've got open coils and I want to put a cover on it. You can do that. But remember that if there's no wax between the bobbin and the top of the cover, even the cover like this, this one's carbon fiber. So it's not as, as prone to it, but let's say you have even a tele pickup or you have a, any kind of humbucker or any kind of pickup that you want to put a cover on it. Um, that pick, that cover is going to vibrate if there's no wax underneath there. So do the same thing before you put the slide the cover down on top of it. What I would do is make sure everything fits, make sure that your screws are sticking up the proper amount, you know, kind of dry fit everything ahead of time. And then lay that thing face up or face down, you know, bottom up on the table on a towel or something, and then drip some candle wax in there a little bit and then slap that thing down on there before it gets cool and then solder one, you know, opposite corners or opposite sides to keep it tight against there. Otherwise you can have feedback when you add a cover to your humbucker. So just a couple of tips there uh, that you can do on your own. If you're still having problems and you want the stuff wax potted, I mean, that's something that we can do for you. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically it. Don't get it too quiet because we like that feedback. We like that vocal quality of the pickup, but we do want the thing to be playable under all environments that we find ourselves in. If you have any questions about this or you want to figure out how to set that up for your particular rig, let me know. I'll help you with it. If you have any questions about guitar tone or amps or anything, please let us know at dylanpickups.com, at facebook.com slash dylanpickups, at uh, youtube.com slash dylanpickups. Leave some comments, ask some questions, and we will see you next time.